of Dubai wanted to turn his emirate into a high-rise, high-tech hub for banking and finance, tourism and the arts. Things have not gone according to plan. Dubai is a city of superlatives. Bigger, better, higher. A megacity of the future, financed by petrodollars. Culture was also on the shopping list. Author, film director and theater manager Michael Schindhelm was charged with bringing art and music to this boomtown. But two years later, all that's left are shattered dreams. The global financial crisis has hit the emirate too. The boom has turned to bust. In Dubai Speed, Michael Schindhelm describes his experiences. R21 met up with him to discuss the role of the arts as a global commodity and his very own personal crisis. Your book leaves us with a feeling not of love lost, but of speechlessness on both sides, as if you weren't talking the same language with regard to the arts. I don't think that it's about speaking the same language, but about learning to understand each other, even though we speak different languages. There's bound to be confusion, because I think the Middle East and Europe are still living very much in parallel worlds, in cultural terms. We don't have a language in which we can communicate. Nonetheless, Dubai commissioned famous architects from Europe to realize its dream. The Dutch architect Rem Koolhaas created a huge arts pavilion. This imposing opera house was designed by Zaha Hadid, who's based in London. The glamorous venue was expected to create prestige and bring in profits. You can't expect that from an opera house or museum. And reaching agreement that it has to be that way was difficult. It would have been pivotal if we'd been able to demonstrate we already had contents for the buildings before they existed, to put on concerts, mount exhibitions and have meetings with artists, to demonstrate that art is not just a service, but a production. Is that a Dubai problem or a more general problem? That it doesn't work to parachute art into a place simply because someone has paid for it? I don't think art can work as a top-down process. It is important for it to grow from the grassroots. And what about Germany? Many of Germany's big cultural institutions haven't really shown much interest in what has been happening in the Gulf. I miss that at times. I notice that many museums, orchestras and theatres for non-German speaking countries have been much more active there and it took a long time before anyone in Germany saw it as an opportunity. After a lot of toing and froing, Schindel managed to get some German museum directors to agree on loans for Dubai. But as his book relates, the Germans were too risk averse and the Emiratis too non committal. Michael Schindhelm, a cultural nomad, has now moved on to Hong Kong. Here it's his job to help design the West Kowloon Cultural District with private sector involvement and Chinese state funding. I have been fascinated by the area for a long time, partly because of its cultural diversity and, ultimately, its political diversity. At the same time, Hong Kong is a city that has a certain resemblance to Dubai. It is an international city, a trade hub. Have you learned to cope with the criticism that you work for countries that aren't exactly democratic according to our standards, first Dubai and now Hong Kong? 
Ja, ich äh, kann damit umgehen, weil ich glaube... Yes, I think äh, I can cope with that. Because I think it's a mistake to assume the world stands still. Äh, und, das, and das, what holds true now will hold true forever. The impetus for change is so great in these countries äh, that the future will look different from today. So groß, and the future sometimes arrives heute, sooner than we expect. Kommt, als man Michael Schindhelm, Schindhelm after Dubai speed, speed, now Hong Kong speed. Uh, Many thanks for the interview.